hunting monsters on and off duty. The Blue Line Bow Hunters podcast starts right now. Okay, guys, uh, welcome to another edition of the Blue Line Bow Hunters podcast. Matt Steele here with you. As you know, Jared Bruno. We have two very special guests here at the 2024 ATA show in St. Louis, Missouri. We're at the Grizzly booth with uh, David Holder. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And Donise Peterson. Thank you. And you guys are with uh, Raised at Full Draw. That's correct. That is correct. Um, great organization. Uh, super awesome. What what I'd like to do is start out with, why don't you guys tell us what you guys are doing, what you guys are doing here, and uh, what the goal of your organization is. You want to go first? Go for it, David. You're, <laughs> no. David's the founder. He's very important. No, not at all. No, um, you know, Raise the Full Draw is a camp that we've produced for kids. Um, it's a four-day, three-night camp. We started doing this in Montana when, when Donnie says that I founded it. It started, honestly, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation founded it, um, or I stumbled on it. And that was, the first thing was, um, I was invited to teach kids how to blow elk calls. Right. And that was all it was. It was a one-day thing where I went and did that. Um, I was like, man, this, there was like 15, 20 kids. And it, it just hit me. It just, like, I was like, these kids really, like, soaked it up. You know, it was cool to see them that involved or that excited. So we asked the kids at the end of camp what, what would be the things they'd like to see. Would they come back again next year? And every kid, the one common denominator was they wanted it longer and more hunting. Yeah. Oh, and so wow. that's, that's what, awesome. Yeah, that was a good sign. That was 20 years ago. Okay. Oh, wow. And so what ended up happening is that's what we did. This was just considered a kid's camp run by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. So I did that for seven or eight years. Um, then what started happening is I started realizing that what we were actually doing was teaching these kids bow hunter education because the camp would allow kids to shoot bows during camp. And so by doing so, that would allow, and the reason that it was bow and not guns was simply because of the insurance purposes. Right, and, and, you know, right. trying to handle, now we were up to liability. Where, yeah. Well, <laughs> now we were up to 50 kids that yeah. could come to camp. And so you imagine 50 kids with guns. Right. I mean, it just, not only is it a liability, everyone's scared to death for their own lives. Right. Yeah, you know? yep, yep. I think uh, the max uh, individuals were allowed as an FI for the state police, since I was one, uh, is five troopers. Yeah. So I can't even imagine 50 right. kids with guns. Yeah. yeah. I can't even handle five troopers with guns. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That gets scary. Yeah, right. <laughs> real real quick. Uh, it's so, we, so that's how it started. So it started with, you know, um, doing that. Well, and then I kept talking to the organization that I was working with and said, look, I think that this could be something that we could do with, with the states and certify these kids with a bow hunter education. And they just didn't it, not that we like it wasn't like we butted heads as far as anyone got angry. It was just like, you know, I don't think we want to go that way. We want to stick with what we're doing. And and I said, OK, well, if you don't mind, I'm going to start something of my own and try to do this. And so in the meantime, I moved to Mo from Montana to Iowa. And so what ended up happening is we renamed it and and opened another camp. We kept uh, Montana going and then we opened uh, Iowa. And so what it led to, to raise that full draw was a, a camp for kids where we could teach them all everything that there has to do with hunting. But we do it with bows in our hands so that we can certify them right. with right. bow hunter education. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's and good. So that, and then so that was 10 years ago now that we're there. Then along comes Donise, and which was a hard-fought battle to get Donise on board because she worked for the Iowa um, State Agency. So mm -hmm. she was in the DNR actually worked with NASP and a couple other things um, to say that we have a blessing in disguise would be an understatement because Donise has become the face of raised at full draw. Right. And that brings us to all the way to 2024 at the ATA. Everyone here, when you walk by a booth, they've gotten the popcorn from her. They've gotten <laughs> the, she leaves us something to remember that they'll remember her by. Um, but the, but the main thing is, is Donise has a passion. She has two boys over two kids of her own. Um, her husband, husband is a big hunter and, and a police officer as well, like right, yourselves. Right, right, yeah, we were just talking to him last Yeah, time. and um, so any, there was just so many things that were like-minded about her and I and about the whole organization that it was an easy an easy choice and someone to head up, raise the full draw to try to grow it. And so that brings us to where we are today. Man, we're putting you, oh. putting you out there. <laughs> yeah. That's a good intro there. If I yep. were you, Denise, I'd be like, we're Drop. done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drop the mic. I yep. sound like a superhero. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 
20 years ago you started this. Tell us where you're at today. How many events are you guys holding per year? Where, where are you guys at? I'm going to kick it over to her to okay. start answering the logistical stuff <laughs> because, it, honestly, it's growing so fast now. Even her and I have to sit and count on our fingers because – you have multiple states, mul- in, multiple presidents, I guess, or chapter people that are in correct. charge of different chapters. Because I, uh, I was talking with Sean Davis, who was involved, and then uh, he connected me with you. And then uh, just a friend of mine also, who's also a trooper uh, with us, and uh, he introduced me to Sean, and that's how we got talking. So it's just, it's, it's, it is blowing. I can, you can see it. It's, it's this big right. umbrella. Uh, yeah, it's a very good look. You know what I mean? So. It's continuing to grow, you know, right. and I'd love to list the states. So you have Iowa, Montana, North Dakota, Michigan, Wisconsin, Missouri, right. and we're, you know, we're headed out to Pennsylvania. We've been in Kansas. We've been in Illinois, but it, it takes a village. It's all of our volunteers that without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Without yeah. the state agencies, we wouldn't be able to do this. Right. Without right. the support of, you know, here, everyone at the ATA, we wouldn't be able to do this. So. Yeah. I appreciate all of those individuals that right. allowing us to grow, to certify kids in bow hunter education, because not all states require bow hunter education. Right. And so that's important to realize why we're focusing on bow hunter education. Right. It's because not all states require it. I had to get mine to go to hunt Nebraska. So that like I had to go through the whole process of almost like a hunter, hunter EDU or hunter education like we yep. do in Pennsylvania. But the, I had to get the bow hunter side just to go hunt Nebraska. So yeah, it's... That's a good thing. PA doesn't have it, do we? No, it's not required in I, PA. I didn't think it was yeah. required in PA, but I'm with you. I had to get it as well. Right. And that's right. what we try to west. tell the kids. Mm-hmm. That's what we try to explain to the kids. We try to explain to the um, parents of the kids. Go ahead and bring them to camp and because we don't require them to actually take the test. They right. the kid could come to camp and right. not have to challenge the test. But why not? Yep. Because we're going to cover everything. They're going to get it. Uh, they're going to pass the test if they do everything that we do. And the main reason, though, is because what will end up happening is they'll grow up like you guys did and become someone who wants to go hunt in a place where they have to have it. Yep. And then all of a sudden you're scrambling. Oh, yeah. You're like, you, oh, shoot, I leave in like a month and I don't have it. And I don't have it. Yeah. And so you don't want that to happen. So. Yeah, it's a process. Because that too. certification never expires. And right. it's good in all states. Okay. So, that's you know, awesome. if you take it in Pennsylvania and you need it in Montana, you got it. Right. That's right. That's incredible. Yeah. So let's uh, uh, let's do this in kind of order. Uh, let, take me through a camp. So how, first off, how does a kid become involved in the camp? And what's a camp look like? How many, you know, how long is it? What do you do there? Yeah. yeah. So camp typically starts on a Thursday and it ends on a Sunday. Okay. Um, they'll register online. They might find it from a state agency. They might find it from an archery in the schools program. They might find it. On our website, with Raise at Full Draw or Facebook page, how they find it, you know, is very unique in every individual. But when they come on that Thursday afternoon, um, we'll sight them in with a bow. So if they don't have a bow, we provide them the bow, the arrow, the release, everything needed. Oh, wow, that's yeah. incredible. Mm-hmm. And then, and so we have a trailer that has all of that equipment into it. So that's why we're constantly asking for support, right, you know, absolutely. what's needed. Um, it's same thing. We we'll help them then set up their tent. So if they don't have a tent, we'll help them provide them the tent or a sleeping bag. Um, but we do can't tent to camp it. Yeah. So all weekend long, Thursday through Sunday, they're in a tent. That's, an, that's awesome. That's it a great is, experience for kids. What you see at the camps when, when, you, when that takes place is you see this, um, you see the kids. It's, it's every camp. I don't care what state we're in or what we're doing. It all starts the same. They're all kind of like separated, separated. They're not into each other. You know, they don't know each other. Mm-hmm. Their tent is my tents over here their tents over there kind of shy of this kid by the end of camp tents have moved together <laughs> kids come together they're all sitting together you think that those kids came to, like right. they drove in the same car coming here right. they earned a brother or sister Absolutely. whenever they leave I, there i read yeah. on the website that it's like archery this archery camp isn't like other camps like by the end of it everyone becomes super close to, to one another which is that's really cool so yeah and very like-minded individuals but most of them don't have a friend that they came with, you know, but right. they're leaving with a friend. That's awesome. 100%. Uh, we also put them into groups. So we'll put them into six different groups, and that helps that bond or that relationship because they're with that group the entire time. Right. So as they're going through our different stations, um, they're going with that group of that station. So they might go to fire and shelter building, um, basic first aid or outdoor preparedness, and they're not going it by themselves. They're going to it as a group. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Becomes like a buddy system almost, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. 
And then, uh, you, Matt, you mentioned um, how do the kids become involved or, or, like, how do they find out about this and, like, so they'll register through our website. The website, with, right. Yep, through Raise It Full Draw. Um, and it does cost 250 to attend. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have scholarships available for that. And so if a family cannot afford that 250 we try our best to find a donor or a company that will help sponsor those kids to come to camp. Um, and then as they go through, so we're on Thursdays that we were before ahead, um, as they go through, they continue that progression of bow hunter education. So we don't just throw them up into the tree stand and they start <laughs> shooting. Right. You know, there's a, a progression that goes through that. Very yeah, cool. it, it, I mean, and so it's a step-by-step process, um, but it's not. And what I mean, there's free time in there. The kids get to shoot. Their, that's the thing that these kids are probably shooting somewhere between 500 and 1,000 arrows over the next four days. <laughs> right. I don't know if I've shot that much in the last three years. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and, but that's a, what's so cool yeah. about it is when you do have free time, you know, we'll yeah. take a break in between stations or whatever. Say it's a two-hour lunch break. And so the kids, they take 20 minutes to eat. Can we shoot? Can we shoot? Can yeah. we shoot? So that's where volunteers become critical, that we have to have enough people there so it's safe that we can have kids out on a range because they're actually walking a 3D range and shooting 3D targets right. as well as shooting yeah. static targets. Right, right. We start all of them. When Donnie's mentioned they come in on a Thursday, we'll spend as much time as we need to because we'll have kids that are um, that bring their own bows and that yep. are capable of shooting targets already. We'll have kids that have never seen a bow, don't have any clue. And we have volunteers that will work with them until we have everyone a- capable of shooting 10 to 20 yards. Right. Um, and the other thing is we're not, we're not big on distance. That's not what raised the, raised the full draw is about. It's not what raised hunting is about. We're about, if you're into bow hunting, hopefully you got into it because you wanted that close proximity with the animal. You right. wanted that. Right. And that's what we're trying to – we don't express everything to the kids that we're trying to teach them. We just want that to, it, to Grow come, come through. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, first off, what's the age limit on this? 12 to 17. So I'm out by 20 years. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 no. no. You, you'd be a make a great volunteer. Yeah. And, well, and that was my next question. Who do you get for volunteers? Uh, like, uh, I'm sure with it being everywhere, you guys need help everywhere you go. Absolutely. Uh, we will see some bow hunter education instructors, um, some firearm instructors, because we do actually provide firearm shooting sometimes, so gamo air rifle guns. Okay. We have those cool. in our trailers. That's a great learning tool. It mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we still want to be able to talk about zones of fire and firearm handling. You know, right. it's just not everybody is shooting a shotgun for right. the first time or a rifle the first time, you know. Right. Uh, so we're still bringing that aspect into it as an evening program. Uh, but other volunteers might just be bow hunters. They might be yeah. super passionate, just like you guys are, and wanting to help us to grow this next generation of bow hunters. Right, right, right. Absolutely. I just was asking that question more like I'm a parent, so I want to know what type of people are, are coming there. And uh, The thing I keep hearing at the ATA show when we interviewed Jim Shockey, and it's, it, it's just become so apparent within the outdoor industry, is like-minded. And you've said 100%. it a bunch of times in this podcast is like-minded people. So is that what you would say is it's, it, it's like-minded people with the outdoor industry, people that are super passionate about bow hunting that are volunteers? Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And now they do have to pass a background check. Okay. You know, we have we to like make, that too. <laughs> yeah. We have to make sure that people that are there are safe. The kids are safe. Um, we get some questions. It's that day and age, um, you know, on, because it's a co-ed camp. Yeah. But all uh, and and we can have it as a co ed camp and hold it the way we do because each kid stays in their own tent. Okay. Okay, so we're monitoring those kids, but there's no by by not putting them in a cabin, so to speak, we don't have boys and girls in there. We've never had a issue of another child being born from a camp um, <laughs> after yeah. 20 years of camp you've I never mean, had an investigation after camp that's good news no, nothing <laughs> yeah. like that and good. so my so my point with that is th- there's, there's certain values um certain ethics that we're instilling in these kids yeah. and hopefully from our instructors as well it's kind of a it come like the like-minded is all there we say grace before every meal we say we pledge allegiance to a flag we raise it we want these kids to understand that we couldn't do this if there wasn't people out there protecting us like you guys, yeah. that there wasn't military that, I mean, we just want them to understand that this freedom that we have, God gave it to us and don't take it for for granted. And right. it's, it, and, and so the people that are drawn in to be instructors with us are the same kind of people, right. you know, um, right. someone that will, I mean, don't get me wrong. When you got 50 kids at some point, some kid's going to need to be talked to, Hey, 
you can't run with the bow in your hand yeah. or something of that nature. But you want instructors, you want volunteers that are willing to step outside their comfort zone maybe and say, hey, it's not my child. I mean, it, in no means are we doing, we do everything by the book. You know, we're not pulling someone aside or anything like that. But we have very few instances where we ever have any kind of um, punishment type thing where, you know, we don't, we don't do anything like that. We've never had to send kids home. Because Our kids are good kids. They're good you know, kids. They want to come because they want to learn. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know, they're right. not being forced to come. We're not putting the drill instructor hats on, right? No, right. Yeah. not at all. I would have right. loved this as a kid. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I mean? I would have just, uh, well, when you started this, I think I would have been 17, so I aged out at the wrong time. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So, so it's, uh, what, about a three- or four-day camp? Four days. Four days, three nights. Four days, okay. And shoot, what, five to 500 to 1,000 shots? That's incredible, too. Do you start out with releases? you guys shoot fingers? or We have releases. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know okay. it's like a progression you said. Uh, like There may be a certain hand, handful or ratio of kids that have never been around a bow before, and it may be just be getting into archery or, or, or hunting in general, and it's something that you guys are looking to expose these children to, to that way they grow up with that intent and that knowledge you know and they can take it and grow older with and 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 instill a tradition into their kids possibly you know what i mean but like if it's somebody just coming from absolute zero with no background um when they first initially get into a camp how does that camp look and how do you run along with like a timeline of introducing them to the bow and then is there trees because i heard that there's trees tree tree stands, tree, tree yep. stand safety ground blinds, ground blinds and then uh tracking and stuff of deer yep. whatever blood trails and then the whole shebang really you know what i mean and then is it just like a progression till you get to the end and is there what's the finale then too for them yeah. or actually <laughs> we're talking about progression so like walk us through the actual steps of how one okay. camp you know would would progress there yeah. Go. Do you mean to do that? Yeah. So as they come in, and I was trying to get through this on, you know, the original day of that Thursday. So yeah. when they come in, um, we get them all set up with their tents. We grab the bows that needs to learn how to shoot a bow. Um, and we get them set it in with their eye dominant see, you know, what their draw length is, what their draw weight is to ensure that that bow is going to properly fit them. Right. So of the 50 kids, you know, half of them might need a bow, to be honest. Right. And so we're taking some time to get that done set up and, yeah, and getting right. all this set up in. Um, and then we actually split them up into three different groups. And one group is shooting on the range. One group is learning about your bow and about your arrow. Um, and then the other group is walking what our 3D course is. So we also want to instill like what hunting is. And so we want them around those targets. Um, so as they go through that, then they switch all of those stations. Um, that next day is when they'll do how to build a fire, how to build a shelter, outdoor preparedness, orienteering, um, and then we continue to build upon it and um, talk about deco- decoys and game calls and... Um, water, we, we take them down, let the kids purify, you know, get, use water bottles water. and things like that. Yeah. The things that weren't, like you talked about being able to do it when you were a kid, that's kind of where I came from. You yeah. know, I was like, when we first started it, I was like, what is it that would make this so much fun that kids want to come? Right. You, that's the whole thing is they're actually learning something, but they have no idea that we're teaching them. Yeah, right. You right. see what I'm saying? I mean, right. imagine going to school that way. If right. someone could have taught you math without you ever actually having to sit at a chalkboard. Like you and, have to learn. Right. This. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, if someone had a way of teaching you that where you felt it. Yeah. Where right. you wanted to. Do, you were like, wait a minute, I want to do that again. Yep. Well, yeah. that's what we're doing with these kids. They don't realize that we're teaching them. Right. Yep. Um, and then so what ends up happening is it's a progression through those days. The kids that are farther behind will catch up. Yep. They'll ne- they, they won't catch. I mean, I shouldn't say that because once in a while we'll have a kid that actually wins a competition or something at camp with a camp bow, meaning he's never shot a bow. He's borrowing a bow from us. Right. And we'll see. So, you'll have that unique individual that will just progress so fast. It's out of the blue. It's yeah. out of the blue. But yep. so but it's not likely typically. But here's the thing, Jared, I would go back and tell you that you because you hit it, the nail on the head. And that is we're not going to turn every one of these kids into a bow hunter. Right. That's not our intention. But what we are going to do is show them what bow hunting's like yep. and show them what hunting's like and show them that by doing this, th- that hunters yep. have an image sometimes that is portrayed on us that doesn't look right, doesn't yep. feel right. right. And maybe we convince a kid that, let's just say that they go through it, they're 12 years old, six, seven years later when they can vote. Right. Now they're faced with a gun law, right. you know, something. How are they going to vote? Because now they went through this with all these other kids and said, wait a minute. 
when when we have a school shooting, that's not the kids that I went to camp with. It's right. not a it's right. not a hunter. It's not someone yep. who carries a gun or carries a bow that's doing these awful acts. It's yep. someone else entirely. And so if we can instill that kind of thing in these yep. kids, then we're making I, I, I uh, mean huge that, progress. The, 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 and yeah. hence the reason that Don East is pushing so hard for us that yep. we want to be everywhere because it's become such a big deal. Yeah, it's that, just it falls into the lines of changing the narrative of how outsiders view hunting absolutely. and law enforcement yeah. in general because both have had shade on them uh, over the years you know what i mean hunting in general and it's like people that don't or have never been exposed to that situation have no idea how either side is run or the the traditions or any, anything that the the way the work is done on absolutely. the inside so that's great because if you if you expose these kids and then it just blossoms and then they teach somebody and it just it's a, the possibility of the growth that, that it's there it could change lives drastically that by the thousands and when, so yeah when we met yesterday to that point it, it like I, I met you you know shook your hand and I'm um, like hey excited to do the podcast and you're like brother we got to do something or else we're gonna yeah. lose what we have yeah and uh, perceptions everything right so uh, I applaud you guys on your work on trying to change that perception with people who normally wouldn't be exposed to that. Um, uh, another question is, so a kid comes to camp, are they, is it one and done? Do you guys try and get all new kids or are they allowed to come back? Do you guys have return both. kids? We see both. Yep. Okay. Um, Go ahead. I'm just going to cam okay. camera guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do see both uh, returner kids and new kids. Um, I would say 75% of them are all new kids that okay. are going through it. Um, really the curriculum that we're doing for these participants is the same year after year. Mm -hmm. So we do things to help build upon those skills. So remember back in our time when the Oregon trail existed. Right. And so yeah. instead of doing like just basic first aid or basic fire and shelter building, now they're going on this trail. They have to put what, what's going to be in their pack for survival. What, what do they need to, yeah, to what do? Yeah. What are you going to take a, yep. a game boy or this knife? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so then, you know, things might happen along this journey. They run out of water. They got bit, whatever, you know, like they have to <laughs> have a survival instant that they're trying to fix too. So that's kind of a stage two, um, but new in Pennsylvania, this will, you know, obviously all the kids will be brand new and never right, attended absolutely. a camp before. No, that's incredible. But now, so, and then the other thing that we will do with these kids is as they come in, let's say we have a child that comes two years in a row, because I can tell you right now, typically... 90% of them want to come back, right. you know, and we want to, them to come back, but I want them to come back for a different reason. I want them to come back and get so ingrained in what we're doing that then they, we started mentoring these kids and we start using them as um, like an assistant right. to the, whoever the volunteer is that's teaching. And so we get kids coming back. And so typically those are our 17, 18 year old kids, 19. We even got some instru full blown instructors now that actually went through camp. Oh, right, that's right. awesome. Yeah. So. That, it, that's funny because uh, the state police in Pennsylvania, we have a similar program called Camp Cadet right? where we, we bring, you know, youth from all backgrounds. They come, they go through a week of basically like our state police training, you know, marching, getting up at 530 in the morning, running. And what's crazy that I found out about that is a lot of the kids that go through that program end up becoming instructors or, you know, like camp leaders and then end up becoming state troopers, you know, ultimately. So it's like the same idea where you guys, you know, they come through through the program. Maybe they become helpers of the program, and ultimately, hopefully, they become you know part of this industry. Absolutely. Maybe not the industry, but part of you know the outdoor community. Yep. yep. Just a bigger, An advocate. bigger yes. yeah, advocate, yep. mentor. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Obviously, this this you know, like anything, it takes money to run it. It takes help. Uh, you know, volunteers. Uh, if someone wants to help out and become a volunteer, how do they do that? So in general, not or just in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, in general? Let's go in general. Okay. So in general, they will go to our website and sign up on a link that says volunteer. Okay. You know, as a volunteer. Smart. Yeah, come and volunteer <laughs> with us. And then on there, there's actually options of which state they would like to volunteer in. So we have, um, you know, in Pennsylvania, the three different locations we listed there that they can choose from. And then it gets down into what days are you available? Because not everybody can make that Thursday through Sunday commitment. Right. And we're not asking them to, you know, if they can just let us know what days they're available. And then the station topics are actually listed among those days too. So day one, we talked about, you know, what is a bow? What is an arrow? And they can click, oh yeah, I know how to do that. I can mm -hmm. teach, you know, part of that station. Um, 
But to be honest to you, when it comes to what is a bow, what is an arrow, we have a curriculum outline that the instructor teaches to you. Okay. So it's not storytelling. You know, I've, right. di- I've you know, refletched 500 arrows right. and you can get into a long storytelling, right? It's really an outline process of this is the curriculum that we need to be teaching to them. So we stay on task. Okay. Yeah, um, but good. our website yeah. is the best yeah. way to right. volunteer. I get good. way off task. Yeah. <laughs> and you like I you start said, telling uh, stories. Yeah. <laughs> What you were saying about different states, every state's different on their volunteer network and what the outlines you, uh, different requirements for you. So Pennsylvania is a little bit different. You might have different requirements to become a volunteer um, for a... a and Pennsylvania is require- different just because of your guys' background checks. The you background guys, checks. Yeah, yeah you guys 20. have a, right. a lot of different background checks yeah. that volunteers right. have to go through. Um, and Not Act 120. What is it? What is it? The uh, Is it thirty Act 34 clearance? So it's, we have the to do, chi- like, it's the child safety uh, yeah. clearances for... Act 120 to, has become municipal officer. That's I don't know municipal, why I'm yeah. That. It's not Act 120. They don't have to... Yeah, they can go through, said, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Could go through that. That'd be great. Go over but my head. Yep, we yeah. need more officers. But, uh, yeah, I can't think of what it is right now. But, yeah, yeah it is a pretty extensive. We back. just <laughs> talked about that, I th- me and Sean, because it was about finding the clearances for Pennsylvania for different yeah. volunteers. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And there's well, a couple different... Um, they, you know, you can't just go through your regular background check. Um, process so we will have a whole nother process for them you know list of instructions on how to do that it's not hard it's not hard at all so like these things we're talking about it's it takes a few minutes of your day to apply for it and then go and get your fingerprints and you're good to go so well the thing is if if someone wants to volunteer and they want to help if they're a hunter and they want to help hunting there's so many ways to do it they can volunteer time they can come help with a camp volunteer money yeah. That's another way that, and some people just don't have the time, you know, right. as much as they'd like to be there. Uh, but some people have incomes and things like that. So if you're already donating, donating to a 501c3 or you're already donating to something, but you want to see something that's more directly like what you do, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what we try to, I try to talk to hunters all the time because, man, if, if we're not protecting this next, next round of this, this whole next generation. Yeah. Oh, we see a huge drop. Absolutely. Like over the last... Over the last 10 years, like, Pennsylvania, the woods used to be this color in rifle season. Right. I mean, it was, it was known in the Orange Army, you know what I mean? But over the last couple of years. definitely. We've seen, it. We've see seen the, a drop in hunters. I think. Uh, yeah. I know our game commission has seen a drop in revenue. Right. Um, I mean, uh, not for nothing, but you take a look at the ATA show. We started coming four years ago. This is shrunk. Yeah. Right. You know, the, the economy, uh, it, it's, it, it, I think it's definitely hurt it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't know why these companies aren't coming anymore because it's great to do the face-to-face. Absolutely. But uh, you, you touched on a point that people can do it with money, and I know Donise has been like running around here like a crazy person. Um, tell us a little bit about the ATA show for you and, and, and trying to gather uh, sponsorships or, or money. And it, it, someone listening right now, if they want to help out, how can they do that? Yeah, so as I was mentioning, you know, not all the kids can afford to attend a camp. And while we wish we could have it free, we just can't. You know, it's just not feasible with the amount of overhead expenses that are needed, such as insurance, you know. Right. But companies like Grizzly, um, they're happy to help when it comes to giving some product on, you know, bows that are needed for the trailer, arrows that are needed for the trailer. And we're getting ready to expand again. So we're trying to outfit two more trailers. And if you can imagine $50,000 worth of equipment in one trailer and you're mm-hmm. trying to get two more trailers, mm-hmm. um, it's just a lot, you know. So continuing these relationships and building these partnerships with the, the state agencies that are on board, right. the volunteers that are on board, and, again, these vendors that are out here. Uh, we just, honestly, we couldn't do it without these partners right. um, walking around the show floor and just building those connections with them and letting them know what we're doing. Because, as you mentioned, hunting numbers are declining, and they're declining rapidly. So mm-hmm. if we don't do something, it's not going to look good in our future. Right, right, right. We're going to lose this, so... Um, if, if someone wanted to uh, to donate, how could they do that? So that's also on our website, raiseatfulldraw.com. Click donate. It's at the top right. <laughs> yeah. top I like right. it. Keep it simple, Very right? simple. Keep yeah. Simple. Less links for them to do or anything like that as well. But so. someone will actually, re- if someone has something, that, if they want to donate a product or something like that, right. especially for the banquet, used to, it was very difficult for us to turn product into the funds that we needed but now with our first banquet coming on board we're, we're capable of doing that so there's more opportunity for that but someone will contact them um so that you'll hear from someone and we can talk through you know is it a tree stand and where do we need it delivered and that kind of thing and where would it go or would it be something we would use during camp 
you right, know, or right, both. Right. Um, we see that oftentimes. Grizzly's been a great one. You know, we have Grizzly coolers there at camp, but we also give away camp. You know, give away Grizzly coolers when we're doing banquet giveaways, or we hold a 3D shoot at the Iowa Deer Classic that um, is a big fundraiser for Raise the Full Draw mm-hmm. as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's that, awesome. That yep. is awesome. When uh, when do you guys kick off 2024 the camps? So our first camp is in June. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, actually, no. our first one is in Iowa at David's ah, uh, yeah. camp, and then we go to Missouri. Then we go to Pennsylvania. Go to yeah, I yep. knew one was in June there in PA. Yep. Yep. yep, and the same time that the Pennsylvania camp is taking place is when the Michigan camp is taking place. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but we're actually going to be at the Great American yeah, Outdoor okay. Show, this 10-day, yep. nine-day show that yep. everybody is warning me about. <laughs> yeah, so yep. bring me water, help me with my feet, I yep, guess yep. is what they're saying. Well, so. we'll be there. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're yeah. planning on stopping by. We're not going to be there nine days, though. <laughs> yeah. yep. we'll, we'll, we'll maybe make it halfway through and give you a a cheer yeah okay. <laughs> sneakers keep, insoles and water keep yeah. going yeah anyone yep. that you see uh in those booths come the last day of that last sunday they're pretty miserable yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so, a that's a lot it's a work week yeah. but you know we yep. see the value in being there oh yeah. absolutely such absolutely. so many people are going to walk around that show and see and if we can just talk about what raise it full dry is mm-hmm. um we're going to be doing a raffle there uh, so we're going to have some items there for a raffle so donation parts of it yeah. And then we're going to be promoting that banquet that's going to happen right, April yeah. 20th oh, in Burdenham. There cool. is a lot of people that go to that show. Oh I mean, gosh. it is like, it's so hard to walk around yeah, there. It's you know? <laughs> the raffle's very, very smart um, yep. to do that there. But, well, good luck at that show because that's, uh, that's a long one. That's a marathon. Yep, I yep. hope you have very comfortable sneakers because it's... I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> I walk around that show, and at the end of the day, my feet and legs are killing me. Yeah. So. But, but we'd um, like to get more involved with you guys, too. Yeah, I know absolutely. I talked to Sean about the PA camps, and we're going to try to set some more stuff up with you. And then uh, I'd love to make it out to at least one or two of the PA ones. And then uh, We're planning on it. Yeah, just volunteer as much as we can, maybe speak, and then uh, we'll just work into something there. That'd be, that'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, we'd really like, yeah. uh, we'd like the idea of showing up and also maybe it'd be a, a positive interaction with law enforcement as well. Dude, I, you, you're, you, like, you guys have no idea how... Um, powerful what I think you guys are doing is and how much you're appreciated um, yeah, we appreciate for so that. many people. Well, uh, most of the raised hunting people know my dad was a police officer for 38 mm-hmm. years. Yeah. Um, so, and then I'm a retired firefighter. So, so yes, I'm kind of biased, but at the same time, you touched on it a little bit, Jared, that yep. the, the, the perception of the police officer anymore is just not the same as what it used to be. Right. And right. it's not deserved. No. It, it, I mean, you guys deserve to be held on some kind of a pedestal because you are out there preserving and protecting yeah, every little see. thing that we have in here. It takes someone doing something outside to make sure that we can do that. So A lot of people just don't realize that because they're getting one-sided information. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So that's the only mm-hmm. way you can look at that. So mm-hmm. That's a whole other trail we could go down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just consuming the content that they're given. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, optics is everything. And that's yeah. the whole point of the Blue Line Bow Hunters is to change the optics. Jared and I are just two regular guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we just want to help, and we love hunting, and we want to explore that as well. And if we yep. can, uh, I mean, raise it full draw is awesome because it's trying to help expand hunting. And then also if we can interject and, you know, also show them the first positive interaction before they have a negative one. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely exactly yeah, so but good. guys it was uh incredible to sit down and talk with you thanks for taking the time and yeah. uh best of luck in this and uh we're cheering for you it's awesome keep going good luck at harrisburg <laughs> sounds you. like it's on a roll though so, it, is. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is we're going we're moving and we're not done stopping so we have a lot of more mission to go out there That's awesome. and i know you've mentioned it so many times but we're going to beat this dead horse where can people find you where can people go to volunteer and donate simply click i know but go and say it again so raised at full draw.com is our website and we also have a facebook page and an instagram page okay and they can find you there and uh you know, it, it, if you have any background in, you know, even just hunting, bows, whatever, they could use your help. They'd love to have you. Uh, you know, and if you can't donate your time and you can donate money, you have a company or something that can reach out and help financially or donate something for your banquet, that would be awesome as well. And I know you guys would greatly appreciate that. But yep. 
Jared and I greatly appreciate this. is awesome to, yeah. to oh, sit down a, with you guys. We're yeah, going to we share really the word as much as we can as well. And appreciate yep. you, fellas. Yeah. Thank you so appreciate much for having thank, us. Thank you for being that. on here. Yep. Awesome, man. Thank you to Grizzly, by the way. This isn't a table. Yeah, this how about is a, that? a 450 cooler. cooler. Actually, we yeah. have two people inside here right yeah. now. They're probably <laughs> lacking off. <oxygen. laughs> we're uh, taking them to jail right after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. So, yeah, this is a crazy cooler. I think uh, Jeremy said he was going to sell this to us for like $40, which I thought was crazy. I'm filling it up with ice and jumping in it when I get home. I was getting ready to say that's what I Got one. He's yep. going to send us one so we can do a cold plunge at the yep. house. Oh, that's I'll awesome. I'll be yeah. over. I never yeah. did one. I want to try one. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'm crazy enough to try it, too. So, yep. Yep. But, no, thank you guys again. Yeah. Really thank appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. Appreciate thank you. you. Yep. Oh, go go for it. I'll let you. Go Funny for traffic it. jam. <laughs> yep. See you. Thank, thank you, you very dude. much. Appreciate All right, you. guys. Thank you so much uh, for joining us with Rays at Full Draw. Please check out their website and uh, also check out bluelinebowhunters.com uh, and check us out on Instagram. Uh, from the ATA show here in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace out. Check out the Blue Line Bow Hunters on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or their website, www.bluelinebowhunters.com. Thanks for listening. Until next time, watch your six.